Do you remember Santiago? The two of us, our backs to the wall. I will never forget what you did. You are still the same man. You will do what is necessary. I grew up quite poor. We lived in the hills, in the place my brothers built from things they found. Metal sheeting, plywood, and it rained, it smelled like hay. We were always hungry. No, 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 no me gusta el hombre. No me importa a quien conozca. Debemos confiar en él con nuestro producto. Gran hombre, gran generalísimo, gran cocinero es más parecido. El hombre gallina. Nunca confíes en un sudaca. Sucia, sucia gente. What about Chile? If I can't find any trace of you before 89, I seriously doubt Schrader can. Seems to me the bigger problem is the cartel. Mira, lo que pasa es que Héctor tiene esta loca idea de que el pollero quedó un poco resentido después de que mi tío le metió un balazo en la cabeza a su noviecito. <laughs> no entiendes a Gustavo. Con él, todo es negocio. ¿Todo es negocio? Como lo que pasó en Santiago, eso también era negocio. Escúchame. La única razón por la cual tú estás vivo y él no es porque yo sé quién eres tú. Pero entiéndeme bien. Ya no estás en Chile. Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, we'll be breaking down Gus Fring from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but more specifically, his mysterious Chilean backstory. As we're still waiting for Better Call Saul Season 6, I figured that we should create a discussion, including everything we know about Gus's past from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, including all the new information from Better Call Saul Season 5, or lack thereof. Warning of spoilers for Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul Season 5, and let's jump right into this. Now, we all know Gus Fring as the infamous chicken man, but what was his life before then? How did he acquire this type of status? Why is Gus the way that he is? We're gonna read between the lines here and point out any potential hint of his past that we can. Gus Fring's backstory has only been given to us in teeny pieces, and I believe that there's still more to come, but for now, let's break down and discuss every piece of information that we know about Gus's past. I will be looking heavily into the Breaking Bad wiki for information as well. It's a really good source for collected information on the Gillivers. Now, Gus Fring was born in Chile during the late 1950s, early 1960s. According to Gus, he spent his childhood living in extreme poverty and hunger, living in a shack with his siblings in the hills near a village. I grew up quite poor. We were always hungry. But there was a lukuma tree. My family had given up on it years before. When I was seven, I became fixated on it. It took a long time, but the buds grew into green fruit. I was so proud. At first, we ate the fruit ourselves. And then I began taking it to the village to sell. Now, due to a story that he told Hector while he was in a coma in Better Call Saul Season 4, Episode 6, we know that he apparently grew and sold local Chilean fruit in order to survive. That might sound all nice and sweet, but the point of his story was much more menacing. It was that when an animal ate his fruit plant, Gus was determined to wait for hours to capture it so that he could kill it in a slow, suffering manner. And he did exactly that. One day, much of the fruit was gone from my tree. Pieces were scattered on the ground, half eaten. It was probably a coati. I built a snare, but the coati thrashed so hard, it broke out of the snare, broke his leg as well. It ran under the house, so I waited for hours into the night. Yeah, it's actually a story that Gus has confessed at one point, the point being that, well, not only that he's been a crazy psychopath since he was a child, getting satisfaction out of murdering animals and making them suffer, but also that he's loved revenge ever since he was a little kid, and he'll prolong the satisfaction of getting revenge for as long as possible. <coughs> Hector. <coughs> I knew it would show itself sooner or later. Finally, it came out. It knew I was there. 
but it was hungry. This time, I was ready. I caught it. It fought me, but I was stronger. The merciful thing would have been to kill it. I kept it. It lived for quite some time. I believe you will wake, Ekator. Anyways, Gus immigrated to Mexico in 1986, along with obtaining an entry visa to America in 1989. Gus had his history before 1986 completely wiped from existence, but why? This thing with his name, what are you thinking there? Sure, the uh, record keeping in uh, South America is hit or miss. I mean, we run into that all the time, right? We usually find something. I mean, before 86, this guy's a ghost. State Department wasn't satisfied with his records. They want to naturalize it. No, maybe, but uh, he emigrated from Mexico in 89. You know, the state just wasn't as tough on background checks pre-9-11. What about Chile? If I can't find any trace of you before 89, I seriously doubt Schrader can. Seems to me the bigger problem is the cartel. Well, the leading theory is that he was a military general for the Chilean government, specifically under Augusto Pinochet. Now, Pinochet was the president of Chile from 1974 to 1990, along with many other titles, including commander-in-chief for the Chilean army from 1973 to 1998. During the reign of his power, he persecuted leftists, socialists, or really any political critics in general. This resulted in him being responsible for the execution of 1,200 to 3,200 people the internment of upwards to 80,000 people, that means internment camps, and he had tens of thousands of people tortured as well. Excuse any naivete or ignorance I may have, I'm not exactly familiar with Chilean history, but it's fair to say that this guy is starting to sound a lot like a mini Hitler. So after stepping down from power in 1990, Pinochet still continued as commander-in-chief for the Chilean army until 1998, which is eight more years, when he started to run into legal troubles. From 1998 to 2004, he evaded trial due to illness. By the time of his death in 2006, he had over 300 criminal charges for violating human rights, tax evasion, along with corruptly accumulating over 28 million American dollars. After learning all of that, it makes sense why Gus would want to hide his past if he was associated with any of that. Now, since Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad is happening during the 2000s, 2004, Breaking Bad starts at 2008, this would be right around the time of all the drama with the former Chilean president. With everything coming to light with what went on during his reign of power, no wonder Gus would want to erase any association with it. Who knows how many people Gus could have captured, tortured, enslaved, led to their deaths, or even killed himself. We aren't sure about the exact position that Gus had in all of this, all we know is that he was a general of some sort, as in Breaking Bad, Hector once called him a generalissimo. Now, we're not sure if Hector was being literal, like he actually was a general, if he's just making fun of the fact that he was in the military in general, no pun intended, that's the best that we have to go off of. Considering what we know about Gus, just how he is as a person, and considering what we learned from his fruit story as a child, Gus would have fit right in as an officer under Pinochet. Gus loves capturing, torturing, murder, revenge. Revenge. But all jokes aside, he could have seen those Chilean people as animals as well. He could have enjoyed their suffering. Just thinking about all the dark, horrible things that Gus could have done in his past is horrifying, especially when you consider the fact that he probably liked it and supported it. He's not one of those characters where, oh, he had to do a horrible thing because he was forced to. No, he actually wanted to, he probably enjoyed it, and he was probably disappointed when he had to stop. This explains why Gus is such a ruthless, calculated, powerful, menacing, cold-hearted killer. After what he's seen and done in Chile, no wonder he's so serious all the time. No wonder he doesn't flinch taking human life or even making the order. It's also worth noting that Gus left Chile in 1986. That's a very important year, at least for Pinochet and the Chilean government, because 1986 is the year that Pinochet had a failed assassination attempt. Apparently, five of his men were killed in an ambush and an RPG rocket was shot at his vehicle, but his vehicle didn't actually blow up, so he survived. That sounds like something straight out of Narcos. Is it safe to say that Gus left for his own safety? Gus wiped his history clean for multiple reasons. The first I would have to say would be to guarantee his safety. With a failed assassination attempt against Pinochet the same year that Gus left Chile, it's likely that Gus actually fled Chile due to worry of an assassination attempt on himself. 
or maybe there was an assassination attempt on Gus as well, but just like Pinochet's, it failed. Gus Fring is believed to be an alias, with his original Chilean-born military name being unknown. This is so that he doesn't have to worry about anyone from Chile ever finding him, as he's probably worried about his past always catching up with him. Now, the second reason why Gus erased his history was so that the Mexican and American governments wouldn't find out, primarily the DEA at least currently. Although Gus is hiding his past from the public, we know that the cartel is aware of Gus Fring's past in Chile as both Hector and Don Eladio allude to it. We already mentioned that Hector calls him a generalissimo, but also, after Don Eladio tells Hector to kill Gus's partner Max, which is a big moment in Gus's life, Don Eladio tells Gus that the only reason why he isn't dead too is because he knows what Gus did in Chile, but that he needs to understand that he's not in Chile anymore. This is Don Eladio implying that Gus overstepped his ground with the cartel due to being used to having such authority in Chile. So somehow Don Eladio knows about what Gus has done in Chile. But why would that stop Eladio from killing Gus? Is he scared of Gus? Surely he can't be in this situation, so does Gus have powerful connections that could come after the war as cartel if Eladio would have killed Gus? No me importa quien conozca. Or, are they just keeping him alive because they think he's useful since they know what he's capable of? I'd have to go with the latter, as that's the entire reason why Eladio and Bolsa even work with Fring. Lalo constantly questions why the cartel would even want to work with Fring, as the cartel is a close family business built on trust and, well, family. Fring is the furthest thing from Salamanca family. He's the last man that they'd trust, but they're risking it all to work with him just because of how successful and profitable Gus is. During Better Call Saul Season 5, when Lalo questions Bolsa on why they work with Frank, Bolsa states that as long as the money keeps coming in, that's all they need to care about. Tú confías en Frank. Nunca será uno de los nuestros, pero gana dinero. Con tal de que traiga lana, el adiós está contento. Eso es todo lo que importa. Ay, no hay nada más de qué hablar entonces. I also love the way that Lalo walks away from Bolsa here. There is a lot more to say actually, but Lalo decides to keep his mouth shut towards Bolsa because either Lalo won't be able to get through to him or Bolsa just doesn't care. All Bolsa wants is to kiss Eladio's ass and make him happy, regardless of if they trust Fring or not. Lalo knows that shit will go south with Gus eventually, and it must bother him that everyone else within the Juarez cartel acts like everything's fine. Me sale con esta mierda de los alemanes. Tal vez Eladio y Bolsa se crean eso, pero yo no. Y no hay nada que yo pueda hacer. Con tal de que le siga entrando varo, a ellos les vale mal. The cartel needs Gus, his distribution network, they're not looking to kill him. Gus worked with the cartel solely to sabotage and destroy it as revenge for the murder of his former partner, Max, killed by Hector alongside Don Eladio's order. I also find it really interesting how Gus is standing in the exact same spot where Hector killed Max all those years later when he returns to Eladio's pool with Jesse and Mike. Obviously paying respects of some sort, most likely thinking this is the day I get revenge. Max was killed in 1989, three years after Gus first immigrated to Mexico in 86, and around the time that Gus was getting a visa to move into America. Maximino Arcenigas was a close friend and associate of Gus, and he was the co-founder of the Los Pueblos Hermanos franchise. They were the chicken brothers, so to speak. Gus saved Max from the Santiago slums, put him through school, cared for him, and was deeply invested and interested in developing his potential. Max had advanced degrees in biochemistry and chemistry chemical engineering. It's also possible that Gus and Max had a homosexual relationship, and although it's not confirmed, it's widely believed. In Better Call Saul, Lalo makes fun of Gus for Hector killing his boyfriend, but it's still unconfirmed whether Lalo was being literal or if he was just making fun of him. Now, Max and Gus having a homosexual relationship was a theory before Lalo ever existed, so this is just adding to that theory. In Breaking Bad Season 4 Episode 8 Hermanos, during the famous flashback of Gus and Max meeting Don Alonso, at the pool, when Hector first walks out, he urinates in Eladio's pool, mocking Gus and Max, saying that they probably like to watch him pee. Another more recent example of something like this is during Better Call Saul Season 3 Episode 4, Sabrosito, when Hector calls them the Butt Brothers due to being angry that Los Pollos Hermanos keeps one-upping the Salamanca business. Pollos Hermanos, que bien bolsa, mira Hector. Pollos hermanos, 
Yo diría los culos, hermano. <laughs> Now, it's unfortunate that we have to interpret their relationship and sexuality based off of the cartel making fun of them, but it's also noted that Vince Gilligan has implied on multiple occasions that they were romantically involved, although he has stopped himself from confirming it. Better Call Saul Season 5 Episode 5 was titled Dedicado a Max, which in English translates to Dedicated to Max. This was hinting at Gus Fring's past, and we were hoping for more than what we got. I guess this was just for the Better Call Saul audience, kind of rehashing the same ground without being too redundant with it. I feel like they just wanted to acknowledge that Gus wanted revenge for something against the cartel. Of course, Breaking Bad viewers already knew that, but they wanted to put that in Better Call Saul just so that that piece of information is in Better Call Saul itself. Again, I'm rambling here. The point is that the episode title was hinting at Gus Fring's past, and we were hoping for more than we got. The episode title is referencing to the fountain that Gus had built in dedication to his former partner Max in their original Mexican home village. Fun facts, Maximino Arseniga was actually named after the actor who plays Crazy 8, the first man that Walt ever kills, so my apologies Maximino if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. And if you've seen my It Wasn't Me It Was Ignacio video, you know that I'm great with Spanish. And just to stand on the episode 505 soapbox for a moment, wasn't it a bit disappointing in regards to hints about Gus's past? I mean, yeah, the episode itself was fine, and maybe we got our hopes up too much or something. It's not like we were expecting all the answers. We just wanted some sort of new information, and instead, all we got was pretty much something we already knew, that Gus wants revenge against the cartel in the Salamancas for Max's murder, and also that Gus is dedicating various good acts towards Max his name. The fountain isn't the only example of this. In 1994, Gus established a chemistry scholarship at the University of New Mexico in Max's name, and one of the people who got the scholarship was none other than Gale. It seems as though Gale was going to be Frank's new protege similar to Max, but as we know, that all changed once Gus met Walt and Jesse. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. There's still more to this. Another aspect of the mystery is how and when did Gus get his German connections such as with the Magical Company. At some point in his career, Gus fostered a connection with the German conglomerate called Magical Electromotive, receiving financing for his meth distribution network from his close friend and associate Peter Schuler. In Better Call Saul Season 5 Episode 7, Gus has a secret meeting with Peter Schuler and Lydia, and we get some juicy dialogue between them. In order to convince Schuler to not back out of funding Gus's projects, mainly his underground lab, and Gus also mentions that in Santiago, Chile, they had their backs up against a wall, but Schuler saved them, causing Gus to be forever indebted to him. Could Gus possibly be referencing a failed assassination attempt on both himself and Schuler? Considering that Gus fled Chile due to his own safety, that aligns perfectly with this story. Okay, maybe not perfectly, but pretty dang close. Now we know that Schuler was with him during whatever he experienced to get out of Chile. So it was Schuler who somehow saved both of their lives by getting them out of that terrible situation that they should have probably died in. I can't. I can't. They will catch me, and then it is over. Peter. I can't. Peter. Gustavo, please. I can't. Listen to me. I... Listen to me. Do you remember Santiago? Not much is known about Schuler, but it's likely that after they set up new lives, they stayed in connection with each other across waters and eventually collaborated in Gus Fring's drug empire, bringing Lydia on board at some point. This also means that Gus met Peter Schuler back when he was still a general in Chile, and that Schuler and Lydia are included in the few who know about the truth of Gus's past. Now, I've seen a few theories over the past few years, bringing up how it's well known that a bunch of Nazi Germans illegally fled to Chile after losing World War II due to fear of prosecution execution for their crimes and allegiance. As you may know, World War II ended in 1945, which is at least 5 to 10 years before Gus was born. We don't know the age of Schuler or how young he would have had to be in order for this to work out. Maybe some of you can help me out in the comments, but my point is that the leading theory states that there were many Nazi Germans hiding and taking refuge in Chile during the time that Gus lived there, eventually becoming a general. So is that how Gus is able to establish German connections? I suppose that's how Gus knows Schuler. It's been confirmed as of Better Call Saul Season 5. Either Schuler himself or his family could have been high-ranking officials fleeing Germany, and Gus became a high-ranking official in Chile, so somehow they must have joined up and gained each other's trust to the point that their life depended on it. The two of us are backs to the wall. I will never forget what you did. You are still the same man. You will do what 
is necessary. Considering all the awful things that Gus supported during his military years in Chile, it makes sense that he would befriend fleeing members of Nazi Germany. Gus used Schuler's money to fund his underground meth lab, and Schuler also assisted in forming and operating Gus's meth distribution network by investing in Los Pollos Hermanos. Schuler would have to be much older than Gus, although I'm not sure by how much, as Schuler's age is never confirmed. Hell, I'm pretty sure neither is Gus's age, but we do know that he's in his mid 40s to early 50s during Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Please stay strong, my friend. We have come so far. We are so very close. Now to circle back to Augusto Pinochet, how did he acquire all of that corrupted American money? Well, that's a long answer, I'm not going to get into it, but a few examples would be a tax evasion, embezzlement of government funds, but the ones that interest us uh, specifically for this video would have to be the illegal drug trade and illegal firearms trade. It's confirmed that Pinochet helped smuggle drugs to Europe and the USA, mainly cocaine, and also black cocaine, which is easier to smuggle due to it being harder to detect. Learn something new every day, I guess, but this cocaine was actually created by the Chilean army at the order of Pinochet, along with chemical and biological weapons. So was Schuler smuggling drugs and guns with Pinochet, and was Gus helping as well? It would be interesting to learn that Gus was in the drug and smuggling business in general during his Chilean past before he became the drug lord Chicken Man. Knowing that Gus smuggled drugs and possibly guns for the Pinochet regime would make sense because that's probably how he's so good at smuggling drugs across the American-Mexican border. Everything that he currently does is Gus Fring, he probably did in his previous life in Chile. Some people never change, I guess. Is it possible that Schuler and Gus were backed against a wall due to their Chilean drug smuggling business falling apart? And to play into my other theory, is it possible that they fled Chile because of a failed assassination attempt because their smuggling business fell apart? And to one more time circle back to the Lalo and Bolsa conversation, during that conversation, Bolsa is trying to make a point that Gus Fring doesn't take things personally. And Lalo responds with saying, oh yeah, then what happened in Santiago wasn't personal? So Lalo knows what happened in Santiago, and he knows that whatever Gus did, whatever he probably had to flee Chile for, it was personal. It's something that happened to him, then he did something back, and he had to run away from it. I'm unsure if we'll ever get a clear answer for Gus his backstory, and as cool as it would be, I doubt we'll ever get a Gus Chili prequel. Better Call Saul is already enough of a Gus prequel to be honest, and with the actor aging, it wouldn't look very realistic. I think that I'd have to agree that Gus's past being mysterious is what makes it so much more intriguing. The mystery is always what gets you hooked, and sometimes the mystery is even more intriguing than just learning the answer. Now, that's not a good thing in storytelling, you always want the answer to be just as good as the mystery as well, but it seems more than not, a lot of these TV shows and movies get you hooked on an interesting premise, oh what's this gonna be, and then when you find it out it's kind of stupid, underwhelming, lame, I don't know, for example, look at the TV show Lost. <laughs> Enough said, right? I mean, I absolutely love Lost, but you can't help but admit that the mystery is more interesting than the answer. Or another example is how the concept of a haunting or a monster hiding in the dark in a horror movie is way scarier than when you finally actually see the shitty CGI monster in the last 20 minutes. Likewise, Gus Fring's mysterious past will continue to become more and more intimidating the longer it stays a dark mystery. And by all means, I'm not saying that Vince Gilligan and the whole writing crew doesn't have a good answer, that they wouldn't be able to create a satisfying answer. I'm sure that they would, but I'm just emphasizing on the fact of how intriguing it is is because it's a mystery. And to loop around to what I was saying earlier, I'm not sure if we'll ever fully get an answer to Gus's mysterious Chilean past. I think that it's something that they may allude to again in Better Call Saul Season 6, possibly to give us a few more pieces to put together, such as the whole Schuler situation we got in Season 5, but I don't think that we'll get any sort of concrete finalization. I feel like they're purposely wanting us to theorize and put pieces together ourselves, instead of them eventually just giving us the whole answer. Gus wants it to be kept a secret secret, and for the most part, it is. No one knows about it, and the ones who do rarely tease any information. It's actually one of Breaking Bad's best kept secrets. To this day, it still hasn't been answered, and unlike the It Wasn't Me, It Was Ignacio mystery, I honestly don't think that this one will ever be completely solved. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have it solved with everything I've said in this video, but who knows, season 6 could come out and it could change, or season 6 could finish and then a few years down the road they could do a Netflix special and it could change then, who knows. Now, as always, if we do get any 
any more information, I will make an updated video discussing it, and if we ever did hypothetically get a solid, finalized answer, I will definitely make a full, definitive, Gus Fring, Chilean Backstory Explained video. Currently, the show isn't over yet, and we still don't have the full answer to the mystery, just a rough outline. In this video, we've discussed everything that we currently know about Gus's Chilean past, including the new information that Better Call Saul Season 5 brought us. And I also just wanted to jump back to an earlier point and emphasize just how disappointed I was with the lack of Gus backstory information that we got in Episode 505, Didicato a Max, but I'm happy to see with what we got between Gus and Schuler in Episode 507. It's almost like they faked us out. They gave us what we wanted two episodes later. Don't give us what we want what we expected and then give it to us right after when we don't. Sure, I'll take it, okay. So, we now know that Gus was a highly ranking military official, most likely a general, and during his time in the Chilean army, he most likely partook in enslavement, torturing, and executions, so acts against humanity. He was most likely loyal to the Chilean dictator at the time, Augusto Pinochet, but Gus fled Chile in 1986 after a failed assassination attempt on not only Pinochet, but possibly himself as well. At one point or another, he befriended possible former Nazi Germans, and to Together, they escaped whatever terrible Chilean situation they got themselves into, fleeing the country for their lives. In order to keep a safe face and hide in plain sight, once moving to Mexico and getting a visa for America, Gus had his Chilean records completely wiped in order to start fresh under a new identity and not have a large target on his back, with Gus Frank being a new alias and his original identity is unknown. So, how do you like my Gus Fring backstory theory? Is there anything about his Chilean past that I've missed? Do you have any theories to add on to all of this? Or maybe you have more information than I could find in regards to the Germans fleeing Chile, or even Augusto Pinochet? Let me know in the comments down below. Or maybe just correct how I've probably been pronouncing everything completely correctly, right? But in all seriousness, if I did pronounce any names wrong, or Chile, or whatnot, apologies. There I go apologizing too much again, eh? But I hope you enjoyed my video breaking down and discussing the mysterious Chilean past of Gus Fring. This video was supposed to be all about Gus Fring before he became the Chicken Man. But if you'd like me to do a full video on Gus Fring explaining his rise as the Chicken Man Kingpin we all know and love to hate, let me know down in the comments too. During the creation of this video, I was getting so wound up in the Gus Fring rise to power facts that I kept wanting to ramble on more than I already have, so I can definitely see myself doing a full How Gus Fring Rose to Power video in the future or something like that. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything that I've said today, and if you're new here or just haven't yet already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification thing for updates on whenever I do post new content for Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching the video until the end truly does help in the best possible manner. This is because the more engagement that you all give this video, the more YouTube will support and recommend my video to other Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad fans. So once again, thank you in advance for potentially helping me out with the YouTube analytics. If you'd like to help financially support the channel for more content, please consider checking out and becoming a member of my Patreon. I've updated it, I'll be working on it more in the future, link on screen and in the description. Since I haven't done live streams or anything like that, Patreon is currently one of the only ways to directly help financially support the channel. Thank you to anyone who goes to check it out, and thank you to the ones who have joined. But regardless of any of that, as always, I thank you all so much for being here, for watching the video until the very end, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Why me? Because I believe that you understand. Understand what? Revenge. No, 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 no.